Hi everyone, and welcome to this edition of Taking Stock for the week ending the 25th of October. My name is Jason Yin, and joining me today is my colleague Daniel Ortiz. Well, Danny, it's a pleasure to have your company today. Good to be on with you, Jason. Very fascinating week and a lot going on in markets, so lots to talk about today. Yeah, definitely. And Halloween's just around the corner, Danny. So let's hope that this market has more treats than tricks uh, for this week or the week ahead. But um, but before we get started, a, a quick and important reminder that the information we provide today is of a general nature only and should not be taken as personal advice. Remember that shares are volatile and past performance figures do not, are not to be relied upon as a guide for future performance. All right, so kicking things off with the big news this week. Why are markets rebasing their expectations for US rate cuts? It seems like the hopes for aggressive rate cuts are fading. Danny, what's going on here? Yeah, very good observation, Jason. And we've certainly seen some mixed signals in the market. You know, initially investors were pricing in deeper rate cuts from the Federal Reserve. But, you know, the recent comments coming out from members in the central bank suggest that rate cuts might be more gradual than expected previously. And the Fed is focused on achieving a soft economic landing, meaning they are likely to move cautiously to avoid reigniting inflation. The tempered outlook has led to increased market volatility over the past week, especially as investors recalibrate their expectations going forward. Yeah, and that's a good point. Um, speaking of volatility, are we seeing any connection with this and, and also passive money flows? Yeah, well, it's something that, you know, certainly the team's been talking about for a while, Jace. You know, definitely Matt mm. Swartz and, and Tim Lincoln, of course, with the funds. That passive investment strategies such as ETFs are driving significant capital into equities, which can inflate stock prices kind of regardless of the underlying fundamentals. And this effect, mm. in our opinion, and the opinion of many others, can exacerbate volatility within the market, especially when sentiment begins to shift so rapidly, like we've seen in response to the Fed policies recently, Jace. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and speaking of inflation and also uncertainty as well, I can't help but bring up gold. I mean, the price for the precious metal has been running very strong. What's keeping the gold market so buoyant? Yeah, it's it's been one of the best performing asset classes, Jason. It really is benefiting from its status as a safe haven asset with you know a lot of ongoing concerns around the global economy, inflation, as we spoke about, potentially being stickier. And of course, the Federal Reserve's cautious stance, you know, investors are turning to gold as a hedge against volatility. We're also mm. seeing support from continued geopolitical risks and obviously a weaker US dollar, which has added demand for the metal and sending it to new all-time highs, Jace. Yeah, good point, Danny, and thank, thanks for those comments as well. Um, focusing back on stock-specific news, well, this is a stock that, that you've liked for for quite a while, Danny. Uh, Mineral Resources had a roller coaster of a week with the ASIC investigation into Chris Ellison's tax affairs making headlines, Daniel. Um, how do you think this is impacting their business? Yeah, look, Jace, it's one of these things where you can't measure the risk until it starts to come to light, can you? Mm. And the stock has certainly been under pressure after the news was announced. Investors are, are, are you know, certainly worried that the investigation could lead to significant reputational damage or even regulatory penalties, which could impact future deals or business operations. And Mineral Resources has a history of being very active in the deal market, so that would be significant for the company. For now, though, it is more of a reputational risk, uh, and that's you know enough to cause significant short-term volatility. And we've obviously added this into our active risk assessment uh, on Stock Doctor. Yeah, and from one founder-led business to another, Daniel, this week we've also had Wise Tech, which also made headlines as well. Um, and there were breaking news yesterday afternoon, on Thursday afternoon, Richard White announced that he will be stepping down as CEO and as director of the company effective immediately. Yeah, that's right, Jace. And obviously, Mr. White will take a short leave um, after this announcement and return in a new capacity in the company as mm. a full-time consultant, you know, focusing on product and business development. So it is, you know, good to see that he's still going to be hanging around, but perhaps in a less uh, executive role. The significant mm. change for the company, uh, of course, is that he, he's going to be stepping down as really the face and the founder. But what it does for investors is it raises questions around the future direction and leadership, uh, especially when the transition, as it has been, you know, very, very sudden, Chase. Yeah, that's right, Dan. And, and I wonder if it is a bit of a, a token move, given the fact that he's taking a bit of time off and he's coming back on the same salary and effectively almost the same direction as well. I mean, how should investors think about such a move like this? 
Well, th- there's definitely going to be some concerns around continuity, Jace, um, yeah. given that he is potentially taking some time off and responsibilities can change. And obviously, Richard White's, you know, integral role in shaping Wisetech's vision and strategy, um, you know, might, may come into question for some investors. However, you know, he's still going to be obviously there, like you've mentioned, uh, in a consulting role. And that indicates, you know, he's not entirely stepping away, as you've said. And this shift in the short term could create uncertainty, especially around leadership and execution. Uh, and investors will certainly see, you know, how the company is evolving in its communications and its presentations and, and communications to the market in the months ahead. It's going to be a close watch. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't think any analysts are, are going to to change their forecasts based upon this piece of news. And I mean, what do you think about the, the longer term growth outlook for this company? Yeah, look, I think at this point, it is a bit too hard to make any definitive calls, Jace. But mm. obviously, if, if, if you know, Richard White can continue to contribute meaningfully in his new role and the new leadership team executes well, it could be a smoother transition. Especially, you know, given how you know, strong of a financial position YSEC is in today's um, market with obviously a global customer base, global business and growing revenues, you know, but we won't know until this plays out as it always is. And there may be some volatility in the stock as the market processes the change. And we're obviously filming this before the market opens. So if there mm. is excessive volatility, there'll be definitely comments updated on Stock Doctor. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting topic to, to track. Uh, so thanks for that, Danny. Now, moving on to another company, Pilbara Minerals. Um, this company doesn't really have leadership specific risk, but its share price has dropped quite rapidly over the past week. Can you give us a little bit more information on why this has been the case? Yeah, well, Pilbara is dealing with you know broader sector pressures, and that's obviously got to do with the lithium price, which has softened recently after you know a, a small rally or a sharp rally that was inspired by the M&A activity with Rio Tinto and Arcadium. Hmm. The fall in price, which has pulled down valuations across the board, obviously is meaning that Pilbara Minerals' share price has come under pressure. And we can see those persistent you know, red numbers when looking at its outlook under Golden Rule 3, which is always a very strong indicator that consensus are, you know, are downgrading the company's earnings outlook. And therefore, you know, it is a, a tends to be a strong indicator that the share price um, will kind of continue to head lower given those revisions. Yeah, volatility is definitely a recurring theme in, in markets over the past couple of periods. And, and taking a quick look now at the corporate calendar for the week ahead, we are expecting a release of a number of AGMs for our star stocks, including CSL, Kelsian, Universal Store, West Farmers, Woolworths, and also Spark Telecom. Well, in this week's Under the Microscope segment, we are going to take a closer look at a new initiation, which is Austin Engineering. For long-term members, some of you may recognize this business as it has been a former star growth stock in the past. Danny, why did we bring the stock back in right now? Well, Jace, Austin Engineering has experienced you know, what I would definitely call a turnaround in financial performance over the last few years. That's mainly mm. been due to buoyant commodity prices and increasing capital expenditures amongst the world's largest mining companies, which means that the stock um, has obviously benefited under those figures and actually meets our criteria for inclusion as a star growth stock. As a refresher, Austin is a global leader in custom truck bodies and buckets for large mining company machinery. So as mm. mining companies look to replace their existing fleets or expand them as mining volumes grow, Austin benefits from that, obviously, that growing order book and revenues. Yeah, and, and that's a good point because a growing order book generally translates to greater sales conversion and also obviously scale as well, which will hopefully drive efficiency and also margin improvements as well. And hitting on the criteria that you mentioned earlier as well, Danny, um, most recently I've I've seen that the company has held its, uh, its AGM and the share price has reacted quite positively on this announcement. Can you share with us any information on any updates? Yeah, we... we... Brought the stock in just before its AGM, and fortunately, the company reiterated its FY25 guidance, and that was for 12% revenue growth and 30% earnings growth, and actually called out stronger trading seen in South America, as regions such as Chile, which is the world's largest producer of copper, look to ramp up production and continue replacing some old fleet. 
We can actually see under Golden Rule 3 that the consensus is above management guidance. However, with only one covering analyst, we can't place too much weight on those figures. And we consider management guidance to be a good starting point for now when considering its outlook. Yeah, good points, Danny. And the metrics for the company do look a little bit compelling at this moment. But the key risk is, of course, reliability of this outlook, given the low analyst coverage and also the industry that it operates. I mean, I mean, mining services can be rather cyclical and quite heavily reliant on commodity prices as well. So uh, for more information, please refer to um, to our commentary or hop onto our Lincoln Live session every Monday uh, if you want to ask us any follow-up questions. And let's dig deeper into the question of the week this week, which is how should investors manage severe share price volatility? Now, Danny, volatility can obviously feel quite overwhelming, especially when you see wild swings in companies like Mineral Resources and Pilbara. What is your first piece of advice for members? Well, first off, Jase, you know, I think investors definitely need to stay calm and avoid knee-jerk emotional reactions. When mm. stocks start moving fast, the natural response might be to sell but that can often lead to realizing unnecessary losses. Instead, focus on your long-term goals. And if the fundamentals of the stock haven't changed, it might just be market noise for now. That's a good point about the fundamentals. So when volatility does hit, how do you think investors should assess whether to hold a stock or, or make any adjustments to their portfolio? Well, one thing we talk about all the time, Jace, is revisit your investment thesis and ask yourself, why have you decided to invest in this stock in the first place? If you bought a company because of its solid business model and long-term growth prospects, you should focus on these factors and not just the share price fluctuations. Here, of course, our nine golden rules framework and snapshot is essential. Take some time to comb through the figures, and if the share price fall is not correlating to a deterioration in things such as financial health, past financial performance, or outlook, then perhaps the price is reacting more so to noise than fundamentals. Also, you want to make sure that you've diversified across different sectors and asset classes, which can help smooth out the volatility in your overall portfolio. And of course, Jace, we always suggest uh, and talk about having a portfolio of at least 15 stocks. Right. So diversification is definitely uh, key to reducing volatility. What about on the more technical side, Danny? Are there any tools within Stock Doctor that can help investors manage some of the downside risks? Yeah, for sure, Jace. And, you know, if you look at one that we talk about quite frequently, and that is, you know, the the use of a a function such as a stop loss, which is a great Mm -hmm. way to limit your losses and, of course, limit your downside risk in any position. Essentially, you set a predetermined price level, and if the stock falls before that, it triggers an automatic sale. This helps take the emotion out of decision-making at times. Within Stock Doctor, we found that the 30% stop loss from its recent highs is a good place to start based on our back testing and if you are sensitive to volatility. And this, of course, is known as the ST30 TSR indicator. Yeah, and knowing when to sell obviously takes a lot of discipline. So the SD30 TSR indicator actually helps people um, and give them a a bit of a guideline of of when to consider doing so. Um, I feel this also ties into another important point, Daniel, which is the emotional side of investing. I mean, you know, how do we recommend or how or what are some of the the ideas that that we feel investors should deal with um, in regards to fear and stress that comes with volatility in the share market? Well, it really is crucial to have a strategy, Jace, and have a strategy in place and stick to it, more importantly. If you have clear financial goals and a long-term horizon, you Mm. should be avoiding the temptation to make emotional decisions and overdo decisions in the short term. It's also helpful to remind yourself that volatility is a normal part of investing. Of course, we know that markets go up and markets go down. Uh, And of course, successful investing is about navigating these swings over time without losing focus on your broader objectives. Yeah, those are pretty solid comments, Daniel. So it sounds like managing volatility is about being proactive rather than reactive, right? Um, Just recapping, investors can manage volatility by one, remembering to diversify your portfolio to contain at least 15 stocks. 
Two, consider using protective tools like the SD30 TSR and also three, sticking to your plan. Remember that volatility can often be unnerving, but with the right tools and the right mindset, it can definitely create opportunities in some uh, positions. Well, that wraps up another session of Taking Stock, Daniel. We've covered everything from the US Fed market impact on market volatility and how investors can navigate these choppy waters. Yeah, it's a great episode today, Jace. I think there's a lot of nuggets of wisdom in there. And we think it's certainly you know more important now than ever to have a solid plan, as you've mentioned. You know, I don't think volatility is going anywhere in the short term, but neither are the opportunities that come with it. Exactly. And as always, it's about staying informed and also sticking to your strategy. Thank you so much for your insights, Daniel. It's always a pleasure. Uh, thanks, Jason. Hopefully our members enjoyed the episode this week. and uh, We'll continue to monitor how these trends play out in the weeks ahead. Mm. So stay tuned, everyone. We'll be back next week. Until then, keep your eyes on the market and your strategy steady. Have a healthy, happy and prosperous week. See you next time.